On the last morning of her March retreat at Hedgebrook, American playwright and actress Ella McLaughlin was laying a fire in the wood stove of her cabin. Watching scraps of paper go up in flames, she was inspired to write this piece for those writers who would come after her. What My Wood Stove Taught Me About Writing by Ellen McLaughlin. When you're starting from a cold stove, lay the fire according to the principles that have lasted over a century, namely, clear the way for the new. It helps to start clean when you are dealing with cold ashes rather than live embers. The knowledge that you have made fires in the past is comforting, but that doesn't mean that you have to lay new ideas on the residue of old ones. The memories of finished work, whether it was successful or not, just aren't particularly helpful. That work is behind you. It has served its purpose, and you may be grateful for it, but often the memory of that past work may keep you from trying something new and challenging yourself, just as those dead ashes only muffle and obscure what you need to do right now, which is to start. Transcend your fear of the unknown. Let the past go. Shovel it out and clear it away before you begin. Plan for the mighty abstract, but start with the fine particular. Lay the big stuff, truth, justice, love, as a foundation. But know that the only way you're ever going to get anything that dense and significant to catch is to start with the little stuff. Light up a crumpled piece of paper, a scrap of something, just an image or two will, will do and see what happens. See if after the first flare of the fire, if it can sustain itself. An evocative image may lead you to a character, but then again, it may not. <laughs> Sometimes you look in on that fire only to see that the paper has nearly burnt enough to make sullen black tents over the still chilly logs. This is a crucial and treacherous time. These are a few of the things you can do, and a few of the worst things you can do. Blame yourself. Another thing you shouldn't do, panic which can lead you to do several unwise things, like try to rush it. There are no quick fixes with fire. You can't heave a whole lot of paper into a failing fire without suffocating it before you even begin. Yes, there will be a satisfying blaze for a few seconds, but that doesn't actually lead to anything. And it doesn't create lasting heat. And it obscures the real stuff you're actually hoping to get to. Hope. Beauty. Grief. And you are going to have to let the fire take whatever time it needs to light. Patience and humility. Worthwhile virtues to be reminded of. Or you might start shoving any old crap in there. <laughs> <laughs> but this is superficial, time-sucking nonsense. The sort of dithering that you know on some level can never really take hold and warm you, and it will not make you happy. <laughs> Any more than treating your wood stove like a garbage can will make it burn. Do not put anything into your fire that does not feed it. Do not put anything into your fire that does not feed it. One more thing you shouldn't do. Get mad at your wood stove. <laughs> Pointless, really. Fire is fire. It isn't trying to annoy you. <laughs> Still, the frustration is inevitable and, let's face it, part of the human condition. And sometimes you can control things, and sometimes you have to shrug and start again. So here's what you need to do. Breathe. Sometimes all that's needed to make a fire ignite is the human breath. See that little image in the corner there struggling to hang on to its pathetic little bit of flame? Give it some air. Move the crap that is covering it and breathe on it. Blow lightly, breathe again. And now you have got a fire you can work with. Next, shut the door until it's really burning. You know that roar you hear inside the wood stove when you stop fussing over your fire and you just let it be? Leave it alone. Let your process take over and stop worrying about whether you're doing it right. Enjoy the heat and light. 
but be careful. Fires are, well, hot. You can do some damage to yourself if you get glib and you forget the power of what you're dealing with. Don't tell yourself that you should be able to handle easily the kind of harrowing material that you can sometimes come across. You are going to lose some sleep over your work. It will make you cry. You're going to feel hollowed out and fragile sometimes, and that is when it's going well. <laughs> Don't expect to just shrug this off. Take care of yourself. Remember, the fire is never useless. It gives you warmth, if nothing else. The time you give to your work when you are really grappling with your own truth is never time wasted. At the end of the day, you know more about yourself, how your mind works, how you make meaning than you did before you started. And what is the alternative? Shivering in the cold and the silence of ideas unrealized, a soul unvoiced, and that's what? We've all done that. Light your fire. Let it teach you who you are. Thank mm -hmm. you.